provides that 115 horse, about 21,000 pounds, but a smaller frame size than that 926 gives them the machine to fit in those tight applications, those tighter areas. Um, we don't have a high lift on the 918 at first production. We do on the 910 and 914. That's something you'll see, I think, in next year, that 918 high lift. So if you're loading a 13-foot truck or a 13-foot hopper, you can get that extra um, lift height and needed for those applications. So that's, again, not at first production, but I think we'll, we'll have it at some point next year. About 115 horsepower of the 918. Now the 910 and 914 are based just shy of 100 horsepower. But what's cool about the 10 and 14 is that when it needs that additional basically 15 horsepower and it senses it, it's got a load on it that it needs that additional, it's going to kick itself up to 115 horsepower. So we call it like a power bulge or power on demand. Um, so if you've ever seen Lone Wolf McQuaid. So Chuck Norris gets buried underground in his, in his pickup truck or in his, it was like a trailblazer or something. And he's got this button that he can press and they show all these gears turning and it's like a power mode. And so Chuck Norris, he dumps a beer over his head, hits this button and then hits the thing and it climbs out and it barrels out of the ground. That's what I equate the power bulge on the 910 and 914 to. So when that thing senses that it needs the additional power, it's going to give it to it. So going upgrade or running a, a hydromechanical work tool that's high flow, you're going to get that extra power. But when you don't need it, which the reason why the 918 is at 115 horsepower all the time is because it's a bigger machine. It needs that 115 horsepower, but the 910 and 914 don't. So it's going to save fuel only to give you the power when it's needed. We'll still have this style kickouts, which is common, again, to, to most of our competitors. When they're using a bucket kickout or a, a height kickout, they're using these magnetic sensors. And so it's nice because you can set it to where you want it. So say you want to make sure your bucket's level every time you go into a pile without having to look at, at your bucket top. You can basically set that, and that's this sensor right here, and you have a detent on the joystick to where you kick it into that detent. So when you go up to a truck and you dump into it, you kick that detent, brings it right back to where you want it, and then you lower it down, it's right ready to go back into the pile. And that, that's adjusted right there on the 10 and 14. This height one, the benefit there is if you have a, this, you know, you want to set it for the same level for dumping into a hopper or a truck, or if you're in a building that has a little bit lower roof, you can set that to where you pull back on your joystick, hit the detent, and it's going to take it to that same level every single time. On the 18, we're going to get the same sensors that are on the small wheel loaders. It's going to be a rotary sensor. It'll sit right here, and it'll be a rotary sensor for the kick, for the um, bucket tilt as well, to where you can set those in the cab, just like you set a radio station in the cab. You you hold it, you hold the button, and it's going to set, and you don't have to adjust anything out on the linkage. So that's going to be unique to the 918. The other thing that those sensors give you is snubbing. The benefit of snubbing, when you get to the high end or the low end of your cylinder stroke, it tends to slam into it. And so you're raising the bucket up and you hit that end of the stroke and it slams in and you drop material, you're kind of feeling unstable. That snubbing, you start getting toward the end of the stroke and it's going to ease it into it. Right now we've got the IT coupler um, common with the previous series. and. Um, that's what we primarily see in North America. We've also got the ISO coupler, primarily used in Europe, and then we've got a pin-on option as well. So three options there, uh, two coupler and one pin-on. The Optimize Z-Bar, so that's, that's pretty common across most of the, the competitors as well, but the benefit there is having one linkage that does the job of, of two. So your traditional Z-Bar gives you great breakout force for digging into a pile. For, for folks that are using primarily forks, they want parallelism. So this one gives you that parallelism within about five degrees for fork work. So you, you get both. That's why we call it an optimized Z-bar instead of a traditional Z-bar.